Hey friends, you know it's been about three years since I've had a Cayenne on my channel. I did a all options video which I'll put a link to up here on the Cayenne and things haven't changed too much in the last three years. But when I saw this car I thought wow I've got to get this car on my channel. What's so special about this car? Well it's just a Cayenne S but somebody has thrown a lot of options on it. Yes, $56,000 worth of options on this Cayenne S and what's even more interesting is that aside from the Sport Chrono package, none of the rest of the options are performance options. Yes, this is a cosmetic car which is very interesting and I think the right way to go when it comes to the Cayenne because there's really two different types of Porsche cars in the world, sports cars and luxury cars and the Cayenne falls firmly in the luxury car side of that. I know, I know, if you look at any Porsche forum you'll meet a, th a thousand people that are just mystified as to why the Cayenne and the Macan are not in Formula One. They're such high performance cars. Well, the truth is that's a load of nonsense. These are big buses, uh, but very nice to drive and have decent power about them. But you know, they're not performance cars and they benefit very little from all of those expensive performance options. There's no torque vectoring, no dynamic chassis control, no sports exhaust, no rear wheel steering. None of that is in this car. This car is set up to be a luxury car only, which I like. I think that suits a big luxury SUV like this. So it begs the question, why does every Cayenne and Macan owner seem to think they own a performance vehicle? Well, I think that's mostly the fault of the crack whores at Porsche Marketing, who never stop telling everybody how sporty these cars are. I think for the uh, Cayenne S here, I think the tagline is equally at home on the road or the track. <laughs> Who's going to track this car? I mean, maybe if it was one of those RV track days, but otherwise even a base Boxster is going to run rings around this car on the track. And you can add a bucket load of horsepower, as they've done with the Turbo GT Cayenne, uh, 600 and something horsepower, uh, and the situation doesn't really improve. You know, it comes down to mass and momentum. Just like the poor old Titanic, <laughs> try to nimbly get around those icebergs, it just isn't going to happen. They're not going to stop in time and they're not going to turn. Uh, and that's true of these big SUVs. Lovely cars to drive, but it gets very unnerving at speed trying to manoeuvre, brake or turn. And the reason for that, of course, is if you put a five and a half thousand pound brick on some stilts and ask it to turn quickly, the result is going to be less than optimal. But that said, the current SUV lap time record holder at the Nürburgring is actually a Cayenne Turbo GT. It's still a slow time compared to a 911, but impressive no less. So yes, the future owner of this car is going to be impressed because of how it looks, and it does look amazing. I'm not normally a huge fan of the chalk colour, but what's been done with this car really makes it shine, really shows the contrast, and really shows what you can do with a Porsche, any Porsche, as long as you've got the cash to throw at it. So when I get home, I'll take you over all of the options, the $56,000 worth of options, and you'll see yourself how this car really pops because of those options. Personally, I would have done it slightly differently, like there's a lot of very expensive carbon fibre on this car. I would have dropped a little bit of that and I would have added the air suspension. Not that it really needs it, I mean this car, these Cayennes really ride smooth. This is a bit of a bumpy road that I'm on, um, but you just don't feel it in here. Even the steel suspension, magic in these cars, but yeah, just that added touch of luxury and the ability to lower the car, the air suspension does that for you. And I think these cars look a little better when they're lowered with the air suspension and drive a little better because it just soaks up a few more of the bumps. But otherwise, a true luxury SUV. And this model, being the S, gets that lovely V6 twin turbo from Audi, uh, the same one that's now in the Macan GTS and turbo, which is more than enough power, 430 odd horsepower, but most of all, it sounds great, even without sports exhaust, this car. It's got some grit to the sound. I really like this engine. And even though, as we know, the Cayenne's a bit of a chunky school bus, that engine, <laughs> it's enough to motivate it in a rather satisfying manner. Otherwise, the last three years of Cayenne development has been quite slow. There's really very little changes. There's a bunch of new models, the new GTS with the, with the, with the V8 engines, very nice. And then there's the turbo and the turbo hybrid and the turbo GT and all the other higher performance models, which I think, nah, 
I'd say I'd stick with either the GTS or the S. They are more than powerful enough and don't have a lot of nonsense on them that you don't need. Otherwise, there haven't been a lot of big updates with the Cayenne models. Normally, you see a lot more options and a lot more colors. Well, actually, sort of the reverse has happened. Color palette for these models, it's down to a rather grim range of colors. For some reason, they took away that beautiful Basque blue color, which sold very well. I don't know why that had to disappear. Uh, and the rather controversial purple color. And now we've just got a blue and a bunch of grays, whites, and blacks, basically. Or, and chalk is a special color, $3,000 option. And the Cayenne is rich in options anyway. You know, even a model with no options at all is a very nice luxury car with everything you need. But if you want to spend the money, of course, you can get the heads-up display and a million cosmetic things as we're about to see. But interestingly, they haven't updated the PCM. They haven't added any of the automatic parking and so forth that we're seeing in some of the other models. But I'm sure that will come. Anyway, let's get back to my place and we can have a look at how do you spend $50,000 on cosmetic changes in a Porsche Cayenne S. Okay, back at my house to get into the meat and potatoes of this video, and that is the options on this car. It is a little bit of a remarkable car in that it has $56,000 of options on a car that is a base price of $85,000. So normally I would recommend people try and restrain themselves on options to about 20 to 25% of the base value of the car. Uh, this car <laughs> is blown right through that budget. It's about 65% of the value of the base of the car in options. And what's even more surprising is that the vast majority, if not all of them, are not performance options, they are cosmetic options. And I do like a good dash of cosmetic options because it uh, really sets your car aside. And that's what's happened with this Cayenne, is that it's taken from a very, very basic standard SUV in the Porsche line to something a little bit more special. But boy, the money has had to be spent to get there. So let's go through the options. The first is the paint, chalk at $3,150. Now, as I said before, the paint options on the Cayenne are dismal at the moment. Really, blacks, whites, greys, with uh, with just a red and a blue and a brown as, as separate options. So yeah, hard to pick a good color there. Uh, and chalk is one of those love it or hate it kind of colors. Um, 10 years ago, it was very, very popular, uh, very different. But now people tend to see it as a bit of a primer color. Uh, and it's losing it. It's losing its fanciness, but it's still a different color and uh, What they've done with this car if they just painted it chalk It would be quite boring, but because of the leather work and the stitching and the deviation uh, They've made this a very smart looking car even though it's quite expensive to do so Yeah, so I, I approve of the chalk color when it's mixed with such uh, great contrast work on the inside And speaking of the inside the next option is the full leather in black $3,760 now this is normally such a boring way to go. So many people just pick base black. It's just like the black cave of Manawatu. It's just not that exciting. But as I said, this car, they've jazzed it right up, so it's quite nice, yes. The leather is very, very well done on Porsches, but expensive. Next is the satin black model designation on the back, this bit here. <laughs> it is a whopping $510 to make this black. I call this terrible value for money. Uh, next is the Black Sport Tailpipes, $950. Now let me just be clear here. This is just the surrounds on the back of the tailpipes. There's no performance improvement here. Just makes these black for $1,000. <laughs> Value for money. Next, along the same lines, uh, putting a bit of black on things, which is the Brake Calipers, $900. Let me be clear, no improvement in performance here. Just a different color brake caliper. I'm not a big fan of paying $1,000 for an option that clearly costs Porsche zero. Porsche, <laughs> you annoy me. Okay, the next one is really controversial, and that is the Sport Design Package in Carbon Fiber. It's listed at $8,370, but that's a lie because it's actually $10,000 because it forces you to get the mirrors also in carbon fiber. So what do you get for your $10,000? Well, you get the Sport Design Package which, as I've said in previous videos, it really improves the look of some Porsches, but for this generation of Cayenne, if you look carefully, it just changes the proportions at the front and makes it look like a first generation Cayenne. I really think the Cayenne looks better without this package. However, it does make the grills a little bigger and it does spread the paint further around the bottom lip of the car. 
And if you get the ridiculously priced, which by the way is $2,000 extra, um, carbon fiber package, you get a little bit of carbon here, a little bit of carbon here, a lot of carbon here, and a little bit more carbon here. It's, uh, I, mm. <laughs> what to say about carbon fiber packages? Uh, really popular with some people, just uh, money wasted in my view. So that's, that's $10,000 to get that package, which, mm, yeah, anyway, it does make this car look a little different. So I guess that's a good thing. Next is a reasonably cheap one, which is why everyone gets it. The, the fuel cap in aluminium look. <laughs> $160. Who ever sees this? <laughs> I guess when you're filling your car, you might see it. Ugh. Yes, I even at $160, I think this is a bit of a rip off. But uh, it does look pretty cool. The cap does look pretty cool and it's not too expensive. So we won't, we won't knock it too much. Next is a very popular option, the heated steering wheel. $280, actually not too expensive for a Porsche option. Works well, what more can you say? Next, uh, continuing the black theme on the outside, the roof rails in high gloss black, $830. Now, two things about this is it, it is a nice look, but more, it is very functional. These roof rails, and as long as you get the roof transport pack as well, are very easy to mount things on should be on all SUV models. Yeah, highly useful, I think. You're paying, you know, for a cosmetic thing, but also getting a functional thing. Uh, $830, this is one of the few options, I think, is actually quite a bargain. This car has very beautiful wheels, I think. I really like this design. Uh, however, <laughs> they are an eye-watering $5,510. Ah, Porsche, just tearing that money out of our wallets. It is a beautiful wheel. It is outrageously expensive. Next on the carbon fiber train of misery is the uh, carbon fiber interior, which is $2,000. The trim on this model is quite small, the interior trim. Uh, but if you want to continue that carbon fiber theme, uh, here it is, uh, you know, along the dash and around the edges. It, there's very little actual carbon fiber gets put in for your $2,000, but yeah. For whatever reason, people love carbon fiber. If they've just left carbon fiber off this car, <laughs> we would have another $10,000 to spend on options, which are cool. Next is the Porsche crest on the headrest in the front and in the back. Yes, we get four crests for this. Uh, there is an option for just the front as well. This is $570, so it's not that expensive, although these things do add up, as we can see. Yes, the Crest is sort of a historic item on the sports cars, um, and I guess when you're trying to make your SUV look a little more sporty, these go there. I think they look nice. I don't know. I don't know whether it's uh, money well spent. At least it's not thousands of dollars. $570 can be swallowed pretty easy. And just in case you thought that the four headrests uh, weren't enough crests, you can also pay the $450 to have the armrest with the Porsche crest. And speaking of which, there's another one that gets added shortly as well. So all up you're getting another six Porsche crests, just in case you forget what type of vehicle you're in. Yes, so that sixth uh, Porsche crest that I was talking about is here on the exclusive design gear selector, which is just a different shape. I really like it, I like the look of it. Um, whether I would pay $1,000 for this is up in the air. I probably wouldn't if it was my car. It does make your car a little different than every other Cayenne, and yes, you get that extra crest. Next is the only performance option that I can see on this car. The Sport Chrono Package, $1,130. And it's a little different than Sport Chrono Packages on other most other Porsches because, of course, this car has an automatic transmission, not a PDK. So you get the um, you get the little clock, you get the little switch on the steering wheel, and you get an extra mode, Sport Plus. And within Sport Plus, uh, you can get the activation of the of Performance Start, which is the name they give the non-PDK uh, Porsches for launch control. It's not quite the same as launch control because you're not dropping a clutch, um, but yeah, it gives you just a little bit of a boost uh, when you're launching your car away. Back outside again, we have $990 for clear LED tail lights. It just takes a little middle red bit out. Yeah, <laughs> value for money. 
Okay, back into the interior, and this is where we start to get into options that really distinguish this car and make this car look pretty special. The first is the seat belts in chalk, obviously matching the exterior. Uh, very nice contrast in a black interior. I like the seat belts in chalk. $660, really not too bad value. Next is the soft closed doors, $780. It's just this feature where you don't have to slam the door. I like it in a big uh, luxury SUV like this. Uh, $780, yeah, not too bad. Surround view is next, $1,200. It is kind of expensive uh, for a feature that isn't really needed because you've still got the radar beep beeps uh, to warn you if you're about to hit something and a rear vision camera. Uh, however, that said, it is fabulously implemented and it does make parking a complete breeze. Really helps you see what's going on around you and has lots of neat options for looking on the sides, at the front, everything else. So if you can if you can find an extra $1,200 when you're building your Porsche Cayenne, uh, this, is, this is a highly recommended option. I really like the high resolution and the, uh, the visibility you get with this option. Adaptive cruise control, I've sung its praises many times in the past, not just because uh, driving on active cruise control is very relaxing and often makes the car a lot safer. I'm not such a big fan of how much they're charging for it in the Cayenne. Two thousand dollars. They charge all over the map for this feature depending on which car it is. But it's a three hundred dollar option in most non Porsches. Why does it need to be two thousand dollars? Not great value for money but great functionality. Back to the exterior, window trim and high gloss black, this, this trim along here, just finishing off the, the high gloss black tunnel that we've dug ourselves. It's $400, not too bad, but just one of those. Uh, you have to be looking to notice uh, options. Uh, my least favorite option on this car, the underdoor puddle lights projectors, $330. Not that much, which is why everyone gets them. What does it do? It projects the Porsche logo on the ground to make you look really low rent. Ah, oh, this option is just mm, tasteless. Anyway, you might like it and it's cheap. Uh, $330, not too bad. On the flip side of ridiculous lit up things is the door sill guards brushed aluminium that light up. Here they are. <laughs> I can't say too much because I've done this to my cars in the past, like a fool. Yeah, it's kind of a tacky option. It's just taking the door sill and putting a light behind it. <laughs> no one notices, and if they do, they go, how much did that cost? And you embarrassingly then have to tell them it was over $1,000. Don't get that. Uh, we haven't finished with the high gloss black nonsense either. Back here on the rear wiper trim, this bit of plastic here, $300. <laughs> Next is the keys painted with a pouch and leather. The pouch and leather is quite nice. But the painted keys for $540, uh, many people on eBay sell these for I think like $30. So maybe that might be the better way to go because you end up scratching and wrecking them anyway. Okay, so possibly my favorite cosmetic change in this car is next, but brace yourself for the price. What is this? This is the deviated stitching, and it's deviated stitching here and here and here and everywhere you look is deviated stitching, which is helping give that contrast and that sort of fancier look to this car. And then on top of that, you get the deviated seat centers, which aren't the full center like other models make you do. Uh, this is a bit here and a bit here, and I really think it looks fabulous in this car. And this is what really brings this car together with the color on the inside and the color on the outside. It really stands out next to other Cayennes. However, <laughs> $6,730 is going to fall out of your bank account to get this option. It's hard to know what to say here because that is such an enormous amount of money for just a little bit of trim, but it really sets this car apart. This car, it is this option that really makes this car stand out. It looks beautiful. And then the rest of the options are part of the uh, Premium Package Plus, very popular option uh, in the Cayenne. The four zone climate control, so they get their little own screen at the back, which does pretty much everything. I love that option. The ventilated seats front and back, everybody likes that. The Bose surround system, which is a decent upgrade in the Cayenne. Cayenne is quite a quiet car on the inside, so these uh, speaker amplifier options, even the Burmista, really shine in these big SUVs. The ambient lighting, the disco lighting that you can have inside the car, I, I like that option as well. 
Interestingly, it gives you the LED matrix design headlights, which don't really work in the US. They just mimic the model down. And of course the darker surrounds on the headlights because that's the look we're going for on this car. Uh, and power seats 14 way with memory package, my favorite seats within the Cayenne range. So that's it, the $56,000 worth of options on this car, making it quite a unique car. Uh, I was surprised how much I liked it, uh, despite the fact that it's got no performance options, which are not really necessary in a Cayenne, it's not a performance vehicle. In fact, the only thing that I would really like to see in this car would be the adaptive air suspension. Uh, $2,000. I would happily drop, as I said before, happily drop a bunch of carbon, get the air suspension, and that would make this car a very special luxury SUV indeed. Regardless, this car is quite special and I really love it compared to the other Cayennes that are currently at my local dealership. So yes, quite a unique Cayenne S. A lot of money spent to make this a special car. Not for everybody, but if you want something a little different, something a little bit more upmarket, then yes, I think this car will probably still be for sale at Porsche Fairfield uh, here in Connecticut if you're interested. But otherwise, I yeah, I appreciated how different it was, particularly the interior. The, the, the seats and the stitching really made this car shine for me. But yes, whew, $56,000 worth of options makes your eyes bleed. But for a lot of people, they just want a special car, and this is a special car. I'm slowly getting my act together on 4K filming. This is really my first full 4K video, and I made a few mistakes, like the filtering for seeing through glass and so forth was wrong. But overall, I'm getting my shit together at last. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye then. If you buy it separately, the exterior... The, if you buy it separately, the exterior... If you buy it separately, the exterior mirror uh, in carbon fiber